One of the biggest pro LeBron James figures in the media has been Gilbert Arenas. In the past, Gilbert, he said LeBron James the GOAT, it isn't even close. But nowadays, he's changing his tune ever so slightly in favor of Michael Jordan. And in his latest video, I was really surprised to see Gilbert sticking up for Jordan as the best draft pick of all time in a fantasy draft. And the player he was debating this on was Spencer Dinwiddie, as was Brandon Jennings. And as we come to see very, very soon, Dinwiddie's take on this subject is pretty horrendous. The way I look at it is like, who would you, who would you choose number one in an all-time draft to like lead your franchise? The way you said, like with a new owner, they're gonna give up, hey, you just came in the ownership group, here's the number one pick. That's what you said. Uh -huh. Who are you choosing? To lead your friends of all time. For 20 years, you're, you really? I'm going cold. I'm going cold. Because it really? Nah, I'm going cold. You can go, but you got Jordan. I, I, that's fine, but I, I got I, I'm splitting an image. I'm, I'm getting five out of them. Huh? I'm getting five. <laughs> Kobe my favorite player of all time, but like from a business perspective, the league and all that stuff, I'm choosing Brian. I get 20 years. Man, we got one sense we've ever been 20 on years. So stopping the clip right there, let me give my two cents. In all-time fantasy draft, the number one pick, look at LeBron, Kobe, and Jordan. Of course, all these guys are phenomenal players. But if you want the safest pick, the guy's going to stay on your team and not leave. LeBron out of those three would rank third for me. As looking at his career, he's no stranger to leaving teams and building super teams. As after his first stint in Cleveland, he was four years in Miami, went two and two in the finals, underachieved, back to Cleveland four more years, went one and three in the finals, and after that, has spent five years in Los Angeles, won bubble championship, missed playoffs twice, and had two more playoff appearances. For LeBron James to be first overall pick, it is extremely likely he's leaving your team in five to seven years. And for someone like Dinwiddie, the season to have LeBron James for just 20 straight years is a ludicrous hypothetical and a ludicrous argument. And I know what some fans will say, well, LeBron in Cleveland his first time, his teams were awful, the franchise was terrible. I'm not going to argue that Cleveland stint was a good stint of a supporting cast. But look at someone like Jordan. The Bulls team he went to is actually an expansion team from 20 years prior. And the recent history before Jordan is very similar to the Cavs before LeBron James. Look at 1984, 27-55. The next year, 28-54, 34-48, 45-37, 30-52, .52, and 31-51. and .51. In six years before MJ, the Bulls had only one winning season and won two playoff games. The overall narrative that Jordan came into a ready-made team is an urban myth and an urban legend, as that Bulls team pre-MJ was a laughingstock in the West, as well as the East. So I ask you guys, if you're the dream of a team, the owner of a team, and you're the first pick in the all-time draft, are you taking Michael Jordan, a guy who never leaves his team, never asks for help or teammates, or a guy like LeBron James, who is guaranteed to meddle in the front office, leave your team, and build a super team in your own conference. Yeah. Like there was no, during an era where they were the most physical. Yeah. So now you got an era where there's nobody physical like that. Oh yeah. my God, I mean, it's. So I gotta, I gotta, I gotta take what I seen here and yeah. take all the elements, right? I'm just saying it's a and then say, problem. here, no physical, no defense. They can't clothesline you. Who the fuck is stopping you? Yeah. Huh. And 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 his work ethic to the point where you you're talking about Jimmy Butler was on it's, now you got Jim, put Jimmy Butler and the them um, Kobe's mentality with Russell Westbrook put them together that's Michael Jordan's in practice. So Gilbert right here is speaking absolute facts about 1990s basketball and how physical it was in the players the toll it took on them and the overall will to play 82 games every single season. If Jordan in that era, averaging 34, 37 points per game, with hand checking, no three seconds, and actual rim protectors, what do you think he would do in this era with the small ball lineups 
into small ball fives. Like Gilbert said, MJ in this era, at least stats-wise, will be 2017 Russell Westbrook. And his mentality of someone like Jimmy Butler, in today's league, that's a rarity and a big edge on the competition. Imagine Michael Jordan with better training, softer defense, much better recovery in his prime in 2023. And looking at superstars today, most of these guys dominate off pure skill and not athletic ability. Yes, the average NBA athlete is better than 1990, but the superstars still today dominate off pure skill. As someone like Jokic, who they call a tub of lard, is a walking 30, 10, and 10. Someone like Luka Doncic can average 34 points per game and make the West Finals at age 23. Even the old guys, Steph Curry and Kevin Durant, at 35 are a walking 29 points. I can't even fathom what a prime Jordan, 88-93, to 93, would accomplish and put up in this league. I got 20 years. Man, we got one sensible game. 20 on. years. Okay, you got 20 And he's a Swiss Army knife. He's going to play one through five. I can go get me a Wade to kind of sort of try to deal with Jordan and, and Kobe. You know what I'm saying? I can go get, but like, who? One through five. Well, you got 20 years. Now, if you can tell Jordan to rewind back and say, hey, there's going to be a guy that's going to put up 20 we years. Can't do that. No, but what I'm saying is there's going to be a kid that's going to put up 20 years. Right? And he's going to break the scoring record. Now go. He's not retiring ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, stopping that clip right there, Danny Witty once again is under the false assumption LeBron James is playing 20 straight years with his franchise. No superstar this side of Dirk and Kobe is playing with the team for 20 straight years. And look, LeBron James, of course, is indeed a Swiss Army knife. But on defense, the old he can guard one through five argument, I've never really bought it wholesale. As watching prime LeBron James on offense, yes, he could play the five and go deep in the post. And on defense, he could switch on fives, guard them for stretches. But not for a single game was he guarding a five the entire 48 minutes. If you want to be more accurate about it, which I'm going to be, LeBron James primarily guards two through four with the ability to guard ones better than fives. As looking at someone like Derrick Rose, LeBron in his prime locked that dude up. But someone like Dwight Howard, not a great offensively skilled center, dominated LeBron James when he tried to guard him in Cleveland. And one thing I'd say to Dinwiddie, it is kind of a personal preference, but if you knew Michael Jordan was a player who had never choked in a playoff series, and if you give him one all-star teammate, at the bare minimum, he's going to be in the East Finals in Game 7. I'm taking that guy every day of the week. As looking at Jordan pre-triangle offense, his numbers were Westbrook-like. Averaging 32.5 points, 8.0 assists, 8.0 boards, with 2.9 steals. For his Bulls team, he led them in points, assists, steals, and defensive rebounds. And for the entire NBA, he was top 10 in scoring, assists, and steals. If you stack 88 Jordan versus Prime LeBron at their two-way peaks, I would argue Jordan was a better quote-unquote Swiss Army knife. And his scoring ability, being so much better than LeBron James, outweighs any centers LeBron could possibly guard. And speaking of guarding, Dinwiddie very foolishly since he could find a player to guard a Kobe or a Jordan. Now look, both Kobe and Jordan, they've had bad games. Even Kobe has had horrendous series. But for LeBron James, let's not rewrite history like he's always been perfect in the playoffs. As we've seen Boston, San Antonio, even Dallas, lock down a prime LeBron James. And as a GM, if you get LeBron James help, get him a D-way to Chris Bosh. There is still no guarantee he's going to stay with your team for more than four years. Think about that. LeBron in 2014 left Pat Riley, one of the best basketball minds of 50 years, and Eric Spolstra, one of the best coaches of our era, for Cleveland. If those two guys, plus Wade, Bosch, Ray Allen, the depth they had, 
can't keep LeBron James in South Beach for more than four years. I doubt Spencer Dinwiddie can keep him in Cleveland for close to 20. If I'm like, okay, I'm an owner. I just stepped into this thing. I could draft one person all the time. And I know my franchise is going to be straight for 20 years. And I'm going to go to the finals at 16 out to 20 years. I'm making a ton of money the whole night. I could put anybody around him. You know what I'm saying? I could put a point guard with him or I could put a center with him. Or I could put anybody else. Like, that's a, that's a I, I, I would, I, I would, I would, I usually go, I usually go LeBron because I get everything. But when you're talking about what made Jordan Jordan, he didn't have a reference to follow. He was the best player on. But I think. Ever. But, but what I think I'm saying to be Magic though. Too. What I'm saying, he's the he was considered the best player ever by his second championship. Now stopping Dinwiddie once again, saying LeBron James in 20 years would make 16 finals. It's a ridiculous standard and a ridiculous hypothetical argument. As once again looking at someone like Jordan, in 13 years of the Bulls, he won six championships. Nearly half his career in Chicago, he was in the NBA. Finals. I'll take that resume and that stint over LeBron James making 25 finals and only winning four championships. And I'm not going to fry Dinwiddie too hard, but the overall notion of LeBron James is easy to build a team around is a pretty murky narrative. As since 2010, LeBron James teams have been a part of nearly 70 trades. And in terms of superstar help, he had Wade, Bosch, Kyrie, Love, Anthony Davis, even Westbrook. And the role players on his teams, they're passed around like Mariah Mills. As the 2018 Cavs, 2019 Lakers, even this year's Lakers had entire roster overalls from top to bottom because of LeBron's demands. Of course, this debate and argument is a hypothetical. But for someone like Jordan, who never asked Krause for help for teammates, it's a pretty stark contrast compared to LeBron James and his mass amount of trades. So that right there is the end of the video. This segment, as always, is very entertaining, very interesting, and Gilbert's podcast is one of the best out there going. As always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.